I have my mic turned off, by the way. There's a reason for that. Father Mason, would you come up here? I'm sorry, I should have let you bow. Last uh, Sunday, Father Mason had his 60th anniversary to the priesthood. Now, I'm, I'm going to read the bio. I, uh, I didn't put everything that you gave me in there, but I tried to get, tried to get the highlights. I mean, the, the, Father Mason has done an awful lot. And uh, so these are just some of the highlights. But I have some questions I wanted to ask. Father Keith Mason was ordained a priest in Holy Trinity Anglican Church in Tangier. Is that the correct, uh, correct pronunciation? Nova Scotia, Canada, on October 14th, 1952. He was ordained in the same church in which he was baptized, confirmed, and served as a lay minister as a teenager and as a young deacon. Holy Trinity Church, Tangier, is one of seven congregations in one parish under one priest. He helped in all seven. Now, I have a question. Were there seven vestries? No. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> One vestry. Okay. Uh, how, how did that work on Sunday, though? How did that work on Sunday? Every Sunday, there were five services. So two of the churches did not have services on one Sunday of the month. Okay, so, but the, did the priest travel to all five oh, yes. on that one? Yes. And, and what was that, the entire day? Pardon? Did that take the entire day? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much so. Like, what was the first service in the morning? What time? The first service at 8 o'clock in the morning, next one 9.30, next one 11 o'clock, one at 2.30 in the afternoon, one at 7 o'clock at night. Wow. Father Mason attended the University of King's College, and I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. Yeah, Dalhousie. Dalhousie University in Halifax, Nova Scotia. He also attended Acadia University in Wolfville, Nova Scotia, and Fitchburg State University here. He served from 1951 to 1965 in parishes in Nova Scotia, Alberta, British Columbia, and back to Nova Scotia, where his three-year-old daughter, that would be Colleen suffered a stroke, which prompted the family's move to the United States in 1965. In 1971, he became a U.S. citizen. <clears throat> Father Mason was very active in both church and diocesan and community affairs while rector of St. Mark's Church in Lemonster for almost 28 years. He was honored as Citizen of the Year from the city of Lemonster in 1988. Uh, you know, I, I noted that I wonder if that would happen today. <laughs> I mean, I bet a clergy person would be given the, the Citizen of the Year. What, and I, I don't see that happening. They have one or two Citizens of the Year every year. Every year? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't the, way, the way things are gone, I mean, I'm going to ask this question a little bit later, but life has changed so much, I'm wondering whether clergy people would be eligible for that. You know, separation of church and state. Well, I'm and very that. active in the city, so. Awesome. Father Mason retired on January 1st, 1994 as a rector, but continues to work full-time as a writer. The book, Search for Tomorrow, written by Father Mason, about the stroke suffered by his daughter when she was three years old. It's called A True Story of Hope and Miracles. And this is a quote, Search for Tomorrow is a thought-provoking piece that proves we should never lose hope no matter how high the cards are stacked against us. This, this story about a little girl's triumph over tragedy is an inspiration to anyone who has ever been faced with a health crisis. In 1953, he married his wife, Maureen, and the next, next year, there she is. Next year, they celebrate, guess what? Their 60th wedding anniversary. Take, I'm sorry? What'd she say? I'm much younger. You're much younger. <laughs> uh, now, together they have five children, 21 grandchildren, and one great-grandson. Now, that's I just... Almost, that's almost half the number of 
grandchildren my mother had. She and my father had 16 of us, 44 grandchildren, and more than 100 great-grandchildren. Wow. <laughs> Busy family. <laughs> I'm not even going to begin to ask how you remember all the birthdays. Now, I, I, there, here's the one question I have. Now, obviously life has changed in 60 years. What one thing pops to mind if you could, that you would want people today to know about you know, their life as Christians? One of the most important things I learned was two years after I was ordained priest, or somewhere around there, Two years after I was ordained priest, I was appointed, not elected, appointed rector of a parish outside the city of Vancouver in British Columbia. There were four churches, so I had four services every Sunday. Wow. One of my assistants was the retired Archbishop of British Columbia, <laughs> was such a wonderful Christian. He helped so much that the churches grew and grew and grew, and I had to start a fifth church. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, on Sundays, I was always concerned that I was not a very good preacher. So every, uh, every few Sundays, I would say to all the people in, in the four churches, well, I, I, I'm not much of a preacher, but I have some important things to share with you. A few Sundays later, I'm not much of a preacher, but I'm not much of a preacher, but I want to share some wonderful things with you about the gospel. So one Sunday after I said that, the organist in the main church of those four, which was called the parish church, she was a lovely English woman, came up to me, put out her hand, gave me a big smile. She says, you don't have to tell us ever again that you're not much of a preacher. We already know that. <laughs> so I learned from that the lesson. When you do your work for God, our loving God and his dear people, don't complain about not being the best preacher in the world. Just go ahead and do the very best you can in every way you can and offer that to God and to his people and let it go. Amen to that, brother. Now, I know that the, the warden said we're having this warden's forum after this service, but we are first going to celebrate with you. Thank so you. you have to stay today. You. you have to stay, come to the Bennett Room because you have something important to do. There's cake and you have to cut it or other, otherwise it's just gonna sit there. Well, and I want a piece. I just wanted to add that that story I just told you about you're not much of a preacher, we already know that, is one of 64 stories in another book called A Pastor's Eye Openers. And that was the most wonderful eye opener to me that I'd ever had. <laughs> Wonderful. So please uh, come after our service this morning through these doors and just keep going and keep bearing to the right. Don't go bear right outside, but yeah, don't go through the glass door and, and celebrate uh, 60 years uh, of ministry with Keith. Praise the Lord. Thank you, brother.